Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 6th of August. COVID-19 cases continue to rise in India. Over 44,600 new infections recorded. PM Imran Khan condemns attack on Hindu temple in Pakistan after India's stern protest. And former Afghan Vice President Dostam urges political leadership to unite as fighting with Taliban intensifies. And now for all the details. Amid worries over a steady rise in COVID-19 cases in southern Kerala state, India on Friday recorded 44,643 new infections in the last 24 hours, taking the overall caseload to 31.86 million. World Health Organization Chief Scientist Dr. Soumya Sominathan raised concern over the rising variants and cautioned people against lowering guard against COVID-19. After seeing a downward trend for about a week, India on Friday recorded 44,643 new cases of coronavirus in the last 24 hours taking the overall case load to 31.86 million. Deaths rose by 464, taking total fatalities to 426,754. Southern Kerala state, which currently has the record highest 178,441 active cases in the country, has raised worries of a possible third wave as it has been reporting most number of COVID cases in a day, despite new restrictions. Chief Scientist at the WHO World Health Organization, Dr. Soumya Swaminathan on Friday raised concern over the emergence of new variants of the virus and urged people to get vaccination while cautioning against lowering guard for another six months. What we have to make sure is that we don't allow the virus to mutate further and get more variants because the next variant could be worse than the Delta variant. So the best way of avoiding any future new variants is to control the transmission, control infection. India has so far administered over 450 million vaccine doses, giving at least one dose to 40% of its estimated adult population of 944 million. However, despite being among the world's major producers of coronavirus vaccines, India faces a mammoth task in inoculating its 1.3 billion people partly due to logistical challenges of reaching remote areas and vaccine hesitancy. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan has condemned the attack on a Hindu temple in the country's Punjab province and assured that action will be taken against the culprits after India summoned Pakistan charged the affairs and lodged a strong protest on the attack. In widely circulated video clips on social media, attackers were seen carrying sticks, stones and bricks with which they damaged idols in the temple while raising religious slogans. Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan condemned the attack on a Hindu temple by a mob in Bhong city of Pakistan's Punjab province after India lodged a strong protest and summoned Pakistan's charge the affairs over the incident in New Delhi. Khan took to Twitter to state that his government will renovate the damaged temple and has already asked the Inspector General in the province to ensure all the culprits are arrested and to take action in the case of any police negligence. In a widely circulated video on social media, a local mob was seen vandalizing the idols in the temple with sticks and stones and shouting religious slogans. On Thursday, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Arinda Bakchi said that India condemned the attack, expressing grave concerns at this reprehensible incident. These incidents are occurring at an alarming rate, while the state and security institutions in Pakistan have stood by idly and completely failed in preventing these attacks on the minority communities and their places of worship. 
India has on several occasions raised concerns over the attacks on minorities and non-Islamic religious structures in Pakistan and Pakistan-administered Kashmir and accused the Pakistani government of failing to prevent such attacks. In 2020, various temples including Mata Rani Bhadiyani Mandir in Sindh, Gurudwara Sri Jamsthan, a Hindu temple in Karak in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa were attacked by vandals in Pakistan. Meanwhile, Pakistan deployed paramilitary forces in the central town on Thursday to check communal unrest after the incident. The Indian diaspora in Canada on Thursday commemorated the second anniversary of the abrogation of Article 370 in India's Jammu and Kashmir, hailing the move which withdrew constitutional privileges to the erstwhile state and also bifurcated it into two federal territories. The Indian diaspora in Canada on Thursday commemorated the second anniversary of the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A, a move which withdrew long-standing constitutional privileges to India's erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir and also bifurcated it into two federal territories. The members of the Hindu Forum Canada and the Indo-Canadian Kashmir Forum organized a rally in Mississauga to celebrate the move by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi-led government on August 5, 2019, which they said bound the restive Muslim-majority region closer to rest of India. The participants in the rally claimed there has been unprecedented peace and progress and terrorist violence has reduced significantly in Jammu and Kashmir since the historic move. Militants have battled India's rule in Jammu and Kashmir for more than three decades. A revolt it blames Pakistan for having stoked. Islamabad denies this, saying it provides only moral and diplomatic support to the Kashmiri people. Moving on. Anger has mounted against the Pakistan government among locals in flood-hit Gilgit, Baltistan over poor infrastructure and lack of facilities to mitigate the losses in the illegally occupied region. Residents complain no relief has been dispatched to them at such a time. Public anger has mounted against Pakistan government over poor infrastructure and lack of facilities to mitigate losses as floods triggered by incessant rains have wreaked havoc in the illegally occupied region of Kilkit, Baltistan. Locals have lamented it is not just nature's fury, but also discriminatory attitude of the authorities towards the region and its people that has accentuated the crisis. Flooding has damaged several houses, inundated cultivated land and damaged roads in remote areas in recent days. Residents have also expressed their angers towards local authorities that no assistance or relief has been dispatched to them so far at such a time. The road is not going to be able to do it. The road is not going to be able to do it. The road is not going to be able to do it. The road is not going to be able to do it. The road is not going to be able to do it. The road is not going to be able to do it. The road is not going to be able to do it. Locals have long blamed Islamabad consistently maintains its oppressive attitude towards people of Gilgit Baltistan and ignores even their basic demands. In news from Afghanistan, Taliban fighters on Friday assassinated Afghanistan government's top media and information officer Dawa Khan Minapal in the capital city of Kabul on Friday. Dawa had also served as a spokesperson in Afghanistan President Ashraf Ghani's outreach team. On Tuesday, the district governor of Sayyadabad district in Maidan Wardak province was also assassinated in Kabul by Taliban fighters. Moving on, as Taliban has intensified attacks on security forces and civilians and are making advances in the cities, former Afghan vice president and infamous warlord Abdul Rashid Dostam has returned to Afghanistan, terming the current crisis gripping the country as a major conspiracy. He has urged Afghan political leaders to sideline their personal interests and unite for the defense of the country. Former Vice President and infamous warlord Abdul Rashid Dostam, who has returned to Afghanistan, called on Afghan political leaders to sideline their personal interests and unite for the defense of the country on Thursday. 
Those term termed that the current crisis gripping the country as a major conspiracy and that political leaders of the country will thwart all of the conspiracies of the enemies. Taliban has intensified attacks on security forces and civilians as they are making advances in the cities. Several cities in Afghanistan including Lashkargah, Kandahar and Herat city are witnessing intense fighting. Dostum said that the Afghan people will not allow the Taliban to take over a province. Meanwhile reports have surfaced that Taliban militants have switched a strategy from targeting rural areas of Afghanistan to attacking provincial cities in response to increased US air strikes after the United States said it was ending its longest war. The group has been waging a massive nationwide offensive since April when US President Joe Biden announced troops would withdraw by September and as officials warned peace talks in Doha were failing to make substantive progress. As the security situation in Afghanistan continued to deteriorate, Russia, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan started on Thursday trilateral military exercises in the Khatlon region of Tajikistan near the Afghan border. Russia is also carrying out drills in Uzbekistan, another former Soviet republic bordering Afghanistan this week. For the Uzbek exercise, Moscow said on Thursday it would even deploy four strategic bombers. Moscow fears that deteriorating situation in Afghanistan could destabilize its southern defensive flank and push refugees into its central Asian backyard. Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. The Human Rights Watch on Friday raised concern over abuses on people by the Sri Lankan police under the cover of the COVID-19 pandemic measures and an anti-drug campaign. The rights watchdog demanded international partners to suspend all assistance programs until there is progress on accountability and reform. Sri Lanka's police are increasingly killing and abusing people under the cover of the COVID-19 pandemic measures and an anti-drug campaign, Human Rights Watch said on Friday. In a release, the rights watchdog cited several cases of alleged extrajudicial killings, torture and arbitrary detention by law enforcement agencies. Minakshi Ganguly, South Asia Director at Human Rights Watch, also called on international partners, including the UN and the UK, to suspend assistance programs until there is progress on accountability and reform. Since May 2021, the police have been implicated in several unlawful deaths including some link to disproportionate and abusive enforcement of COVID-19 quarantines. Police abuses have also been linked to a government crackdown on the drug menace after President Gotabaya Rajapaksa established a task force of senior military and police officers to curb the issue. Trafficking or possession of drugs in Sri Lanka carries severe penalties, including death or life in prison. No executions have been carried out in the country since 1976, although death sentences continue to be handed down and about 1,500 prisoners are on death row. A mother and daughter duo in India's western Gujarat state have turned entrepreneurs during the pandemic time by innovating a unique way of making fabric jewellery from recycled materials and selling it through social media. A mother-daughter duo based in Vadodara city of India's western Gujarat state has innovated a unique way of making fabric jewellery from recycled materials during the COVID-19 pandemic time. Jayati Dev and her mother Hema Dev started the online business named Ere Sakhi that means Oh Dear Friend during the pandemic. They collected waste cardboards, packaging material and fabric scraps and turned it into jewellery pieces like earrings and rings and have been selling them through social media. Jayati claimed that they have shipped over 200 orders which are packed in plastic-free boxes across the country. The clothes, clothes ka waste is like a tailor. After making a dress, it gets stuck in it. We collect it and make earrings from it. We use fabric. And our packaging is also eco-friendly. उसमें भी हम जो बॉक्सेस देते हैं, दो सार रीयूजेबल बॉक्सेस, तो हमने जीरो प्लास्टिक रखा है पैकेजिंग में भी। इंडिया हैज़ सीन अ ग्रोथ इन होम बेस्ड बिज़नेसेस, यूज़ुअली मैनेज्ड थ्रू सोशल मीडिया ड्यूरिंग द मंथ्स लॉन्ग लॉकडाउन, स्टार्टिंग लास्ट ईयर। 
the mother-daughter duo has also generated employment by hiring a woman for helping them in their business. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.